you know, you have something in common with Carson Steele. You both have been called the most interesting man in college football. <laughs> He's a lot more interesting than I am, I can tell you that. So, but what have you thought of him so far? He's been outstanding. Um, just his, his work ethic is kind of off the charts. You know, when you look at the, what he does in the weight room, you know, which stood out because he got here in January, and then that was, you know, you went through the entire 10 weeks of the winter quarter before we ever got on the field to see anything football was and just kind of saw what he did there. You know, he's, I think he's a 420 bench kid, 650 squat. Um, he does backflips. You know, he's, <laughs> he's, uh, he's a really, really talented football player. Um, but he's the thing that sticks out to me is just his work ethic. Like he's always trying to get better, um, whether it's in the weight room or in the classroom, doing running with our strength and conditioning staff. He's been he's been outstanding that so far, and uh, we're really happy with, with him. You uh, don't own any reptiles? I do not only now. <laughs> but that whole part is <laughs> makes him definitely the world's most interesting man. So he's got Crocky J at home. He said he's up to about six feet. So. I'm glad he made the decision to leave him back in Indiana and not bring him to Westwood. So. He's not. It's not in his locker. No, no it's, <laughs> it's it's back in Indiana. Um, you sure? <laughs> yeah, because his roommates would tell us okay. if, if if it was here. I think we'd all know. So, is Nick going to be able to go see Crocky J, Nick Aliotti? Remember you're saying that. I know. I, I I I told him he should. I don't yeah. know what the 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 budget is in the Pac-12 network right now, but I I, uh, I told him we should take a trip out there. That'd be a really good thing. His parents are awesome, so. Um, and I went out to Muncie, and then um, Deshaun went out to, to see them. So Wait, um, so you saw Crocky? You went out to Muncie? I did not see Crocky okay. Jack because he didn't take him to college, so oh, he left okay. him at home. So he All went right. to school just south of Indianapolis, and Muncie's about an hour outside of Indianapolis. So when I went out, I, went, I saw him at school. Deshaun saw him at home. So Crocky. you can check with Deshaun oh. if he actually saw Crocky Jack. Okay. Uh, how does his running style uh, fit in with these guys, and how would you describe it? Um, he's a downhill physical runner. I think he led the country last year in yards after contact. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's always got his pads going forward. He runs with great body lean. Um, he's got really good vision and really good feet in, in the hole. Um, but I think his style is, is one of he's seeking out contact and running through contact. Um, so that's always beneficial to you because you can design. You're not going to design every run play where a guy's going to run clean for 10 yards. You know, there's got to be, it's going to be dirty in there, and you've got to have a physical guy that can run through it. Zach was a great example of that. Josh Kelly was a great example of that. You know, downhill, tough, hard-nosed physical runners, and, and uh, Carson fits into that mode. We haven't asked, I think, at all about the kicking game. Can you tell us how things are going there? Yeah. Um, Blake Gessner has done a really nice job. He's a transfer from Montana State. RJ, um, who kicked off for us the last couple of years, is competing also with him for the field goal job. Um, you know, those guys are battling it out just like we're battling it out at quarterback. We're battling it out at other spots. So um, every day, usually when we're in full pads, we kick field goals every day. Um, and then we also, within the, the whatever we're doing, red zone work, we'll do some live field goal work in that point too. So we're, we're battling it out with those guys who are doing a really nice job. At, at punter, we have a few guys, you know, Chase Perry, Will Powers, Blake Gester can punt also. RJ and Blake can both kick off. So um, it's a combination of them. We obviously have to replace Nick, who punted and kicked for us. Um, RJ handled kickoffs for us and done a great job in, in, since he's been here. But really finding who the new kickers and the new punter is is part of that process. I guess the two big things with field goals are length and consistency. How do you feel about those two sure. aspects? That's a very accurate statement. <laughs> um, they're, they're good. They're, they're, it's a work in progress, but I think they've done a really nice job to, to this point. Um, but again, it's the more you can do it live because the on-air stuff is, is good. But the game itself. So we, when we're in full pads, we have a field goal period every day designed um, that we're charting in. And then when we're in full pads and we're doing any red zone work, if we don't, if we score, we'll kick the extra point. But if we don't score, we're attempting field goals there. So we're trying to get them as much live work as we can. What's uh, Devin Perkwood been doing, especially you know coming off the injury he had uh, last year? Yeah, I finished the year with the with the hand. Um, which was an issue for him, but he's been 100%, was cleared for spring. Uh, and I thought he played really well in the spring and has continued. Um, if you see him, he's physically grown. He's up over 200 pounds. He's done a, he did a great job with KB in that group in the, in the, in the weight room in the off season. Um, and he's really starting to, you know, he, he, he jumped into the mix because he's a really smart kid as a true freshman and played a ton of football for us. And each year I've seen him grow as a player. Um, and we're really excited about what his, you know, what this season will be for Devin because of the work that he's put in. A little curious about the depth at defensive line. Some of the guys we haven't seen that much. Uh, first, Devin AUPU looks a little bit bigger. Yeah. Uh, Quint Somerville 
Summy's out right now. He's out. Yep. Okay. Uh, Jake Heimlicker. You got Jake Heimlicker. You got Keanu. You've got Keanu. Gary. You got Jay. You got Set of Any. Um, there's a lot of different guys that are, you know, Kike is doing a great job of rotating that entire group. Um, and depending on what packages there are, you know, the Murphys play inside a little bit in third down. You know, when we try to get our fastest guys, a lot two plays a little bit inside on third down. Um, when we're trying to get, you know, some speed rushers in the game, uh, trying to get our fast package in the game. So I think all of those guys have provided more depth. Um, I think both Jay and Gary, you know, two guys that have played a lot for us, um, are in the best shape of their lives. You know, you can look at them. I think they both have really worked very, very hard in the offseason. Um, at that, and, it, and it's shown so far, you know. So we feel like the depth is there, you know, with the, with the guys we just mentioned that go along with Gary and Jay who played a lot of football. So. The, the Murphys, how have they refined their game? Would you say from last season? Um, just getting a little bit more familiar with what we're doing. You know, they're kind of like Latu as you're starting to see them make even bigger strides because it's the second year in the system where they're not learning a brand new system. They're not learning, you know, a lot of times it's football's football, but the terminology may handcuff you a little bit. Like it was called this when they were at North Texas. It's called this here. Um, and then subtleties in how they were coached there and how they're coached here. So I think another year with, with a Kaika, and I think they feel really, really comfortable working with him. And that whole group right now, you know, the whole D-line, the whole front, has played really well, and I think there's a little bit of continuity in there because he's got them all, so he has the inside guys and the outside guys. Yeah. Chip wanted to ask you about Coach Cannon, if, if I could. Just have, yeah. What was the kind of the impetus for, for that? Was it you wanted to get him on the staff and, mm -hmm. you know, created the position for him? I kind of have I've known about. Ken for a long time, you know, specifically when I was in Philly. I got a chance to go down and watch them practice yep. um, a few times and you got to become really familiar with him. I know Coach Belichick knew Ken real well. And, you know, between that relationship, my relationship with Bill and Ken's relationship with Bill, that um, we kind of grew from there. And I knew um, some other guys that were on his staff in the past. And then when we first got here, one of my first hires was Bryce McDonald. He was our chief of staff, and obviously Bryce played at the academy um, and then went back and coached at the academy after he served. Um, so I had a great relationship with Ken and, and I was in. Brian Norwood, who's on our staff, um, worked with Ken. Him and Ken actually go back to the best friend since high school. Um, so Brian had been on the staff. Marcus Thomas, who was here as an analyst for us, was a former player for him. Uh, Joe Speed, who was on our staff as an analyst. Um, Joe is a former Naval Academy guy. So we had a lot of ties to, to um, people that we knew. And, and Ken had always been a guy that I had always relied on. And, and as a head coach, when you're talking to other head coaches or um, you know, you got a position open and you want to talk to a guy about, do they know this person or do they know that person? He'd always been that guy for me. Um, so when he became available because he was no longer at the Naval Academy, we just kind of put our heads together. We didn't have a full-time position open, but you know what can we do to get him here? Um, and he's done a great job. You know, he's he's uh, he meets with all of our classes, and he's specifically broken it up. So he meets with the first-year players, and he meets has meetings with the second-year players, third-year players, fourth-year players um, on developing leadership because we believe leadership takes on different folds. You know, you can lead as a freshman, but it's different leading as a freshman than it is leading as a senior. You know, and I think as you grow through the years, um, and then one of the things that Ken, because of his vast knowledge and experience, not only just in football, but then specifically at the Naval Academy from leadership, that I, you know, was, there wasn't a better guy for us to, to bring in here. And uh, he's a voice of, for all of us. You know, I think he, he also meets with um, our coaching staff and just talking about leadership, not talking about scheme, not talking about X's and O's, but um, has brought a lot of different stuff to our staff from that standpoint and has really made an impact. And then specifically our young coaches, you know, kind of have a mentor that kind of look over the GAs and the young analysts here of coaching them what it's like to be a GA, what, how you move up the ranks, how to, how to, how to advance in this, in, the, in this profession. Um, so he's had an impact on the coaching staff, he's had an impact on the players, he's had an impact on myself, he's had an impact on our administrator. He's kind of got a hand in everything and, and really has fit in seamlessly. It seems like he's been here forever, but he's, he's uh, you know, that's a credit to him and the type of personality he has. Um, he's very approachable, uh, he's very knowledgeable, um, and that experience, you know, I've been a head coach for a long time and, and has been through a lot of different things, so you know, that experience is, is a huge bonus to us right now. Having, with Ken having been at the Naval Academy and, you know, their main mission is to mold leaders. <clears throat> How much does that make, make his voice resonate even a little bit more yeah. in the locker room around the... It does. You know, obviously, his name, you just mentioned his name and people know of him. You know, he's revered in the, in the coaching profession. But I think when the players get to know him and understand his personality and how much he truly cares about individuals and how much he truly cares about helping people grow, um, it's evident from the first time you kind of have a conversation with him. So he's been really impactful. But coming from where he came from and they're about leadership, creating this position that we created for him, 
you know, it, it kind of was handmade for him because of his background, his experience, and he's done a great job. Yeah. There's yeah. a triple option. You sell I was going to say, time. are there some <laughs> triple <laughs> option triple pages in the playbook? <laughs> we run the triple option, and we've run it for a long time. We just run it differently. Really? We dive to the back mm -hmm. here, and you throw a perimeter screen out there. There's a dive key. There's a pitch key. That's a triple option out of the gun, yep. and they actually do it out of the gun. So um, from a football standpoint, he's, he's been tremendous, too, just picking his brain about a lot of different things, um, how it looks, how they did it, how they count things, how they check things and go the other way, and that's been really helpful for us, too. But um, I've been stealing from Ken for 20-odd <laughs> years, so this, that's that's nothing new. So a lot of different things that we do that we've, we've gotten from the Naval Academy, and a lot of us in college football have gotten from the Naval Academy. So. Just looking ahead to your uh, uh, schedule toward the end of fall camp, and you mentioned that uh, I guess your game week will start on a Sunday. Does that change, uh, I guess, the number of practices you have leading up to that Saturday game? No. We've always done that since we've been here. Okay. You get an extra day to prepare, so you know you don't. You, and I'll, some people start. I've started at places the Thursday, ten days before the first game. You know, in terms of your preparation and when do you start going over looks. So we'll do some coastal work before we get to game week. So you know that won't be the first time that 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 won't be the first practice that we start to introduce coastal offense and defense. And we've always done that. So we'll take one of the periods in training, not the entire training session, but one of the periods in training where we'll separate and get into a scout mode so that. Our scout players understand how to how to mimic their defense, and our and our scout players understand how to mimic their offense. Um, so we'll start that a lot sooner than um, a lot sooner than the week of the game. So that's that's always been kind of how we've done things. Thank you. We're good. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.